All right. Well, welcome back to our second lesson in the study of Luke. As we have conversations as a family, as a family study through the book of Luke, we're going to go through all 24 chapters, 17 weeks, and we are just really excited that uh, you have joined us. If you haven't, if you missed the first lesson that Zane McGee taught us, I would encourage you to, to go back and watch that. We might even reference some of the themes that he gave us. So uh, go back, watch that first lesson. But we are excited to go over chapter two and chapter three today. I am here with uh, three just incredible people. And so I want to let them introduce themselves so you can know who your teachers are for today. So Shirai, you're up first. Hi, everybody. I'm Shirai of Bledsoe. Hi, everybody. I'm Jeremiah Haywood. Hi, everybody. I'm Mackenzie Klepper. All right, and I, Adam, and I thought you guys were going to actually say a little bit about yourselves. So, uh, you know, I mean, no big deal. Does anybody want to, like, give a little context, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm Jeremiah Haywood. Um, I actually just served um, as one of the children's ministry interns. I was extremely blessed to be a part of this North Atlanta family. Thank you. Thank you for teaching us to love first. Yes, and I was also a children's ministry intern, and it was a super fun time, and I'm so blessed and thankful for this awesome church that I got to be a part of. And uh, again, I'm Shariah Bledsoe, and I am a member of this wonderful church, and I'm so very grateful to finally become a member and belong to a church home, so thanks for welcoming me. And in a little bit, your son Miles will join us. Uh, and yes, so, he will. <laughs> uh, well, hey, Jeremiah and, and Mackenzie, I just watched the video the other day that you guys put out when uh, Jeremiah, you jumped me in the hall uh, as NACO man, bro. Uh, so uh, thank you guys for what you've done, Mackenzie and Jeremiah, with our students or for, with our children this summer. So, all right. So we are in the book of Luke. We're going to go over chapters two and chapters three. And kind of the way we prepared for this is we. We just ask God, okay, what are, are you teaching us? What are you revealing to us uh, through scripture? And so we just spent the last few weeks kind of soaked in chapter two and, and chapter three, and we're just going to share what God has revealed to us. And so Shariah, um, friend, you're up first. All right. Um, so chapter two and chapter three of Luke was, was a very in, were very interesting chapters for me because some of the things that I learned through those two chapters were definitely the truthfulness and credibility of Jesus Christ. You know, the birth of Jesus and John being set to prepare the way for Jesus Christ. And as when Jesus was born, you know, the the um, the shepherds were out in the fields, and as they were out in the fields, the angels came to them and told them that the Messiah had been born. Now, all of Israel had been waiting for a Messiah, and so as he was finally born, it was amazing to them to finally realize that, okay, the Messiah is here, we're going to have our freedom now that they have so long waited for. And so when the angels told this message to the shepherds and told them where to find him in a manger, and so they went to the manger, and that's where they saw Jesus. And from that point, they were able to go out and start telling everyone else the Messiah is born. It is true. You know, the, everything that we have waited for, the freedom that we have waited for is now coming along because the Lord is here. He has been born. And moving past that into chapter three, when we're talking about um, the baptism of, of Jesus Christ and even John the Baptist just doing the baptism as Jesus was on his way to be baptized. There were so many other people that were there to get baptized. And I recall reading a, a section in, in chapter three where the individuals that wanted to get baptized, they were, they waited until the last minute. And so John said to them, you know, you brood of snakes, how dare you? Who told you about, you know, the wrath that was coming? And so even still, you know, even though they came from a different background and they were looking for something different, they were still able to be baptized because the baptism is all about being resurrected in the spirit of Christ. It's being born again and, and having the Holy Spirit fill you in everything that you do and just becoming an entirely different person. So we're no longer living in the sin that we lived in 
once before. So every day that I move forward and every day that I'm learning something new, I should always continue to live Christ-like so that I may continue to grow in, in his faith and in his word and continue to seek his word in the Bible and through the teachings of the Bible. So um, I got a lot out of chapters two and three, and I'm very grateful that I was able to uh, take a little bit more and look into that and learn a little bit more. Yeah, that is so good. That is so good. You know, I, I took very similar things away um, that, that you shared, you know, especially when you, you referenced the baptism and John the Baptist baptizing people and his call to holiness. Like when you get baptized, man, there is a life change. There is a, that's why we say a discipleship is a direction. We know it's not a, a change of perfection, but it's a change to pursue holiness. You know, to, to, if you have two shirts, give one to your brother who doesn't have a shirt. Yeah. Like there is change that is expected in disciples of Jesus. And I love the seriousness and the intentionality around that call. And, with, and you just got baptized, Ryan, just a few, I did. Uh, a few weeks ago. <laughs> I did. I did. And it was a totally, um, it, it was an awesome experience. Let me say that first. And I, after the baptism, I did not quite know what to expect. So I was kind of looking for this flashing light to just arrive and it, you know, it didn't happen that way. However, the one thing that I did recognize is every morning for about a week that I woke up, I, I cried, you know, and for a while I thought something was wrong. I'm like, okay, why am I crying every day? Until I realized that that's God cleansing the old me and allowing the new me to be born, to, to come into you to be fruit, you know, I, I, I'm a new person now. And so I was wondering for a while, like why all the tears? And so finally the tears went away and I'm able to recognize every single day that I have a purpose and that purpose is to live Christ-like. And that's what I do because being born again in the spirit, again, I must walk in, you know, and have that faith and, and do the things that Christ would do. So like you said, if I have two shirts, Hey, I can give somebody one. All I, I'm only one person, right? <laughs> Ooh, that's real good. That's real good. Hey, thank you so much, uh, Shreya. Uh, so, Jeremiah, my man, you've challenged my son to basketball. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen because we have a schedule conflict. I'm really looking forward to that. But, bro, what did, what did God uh, teach you? What did God reveal to you as, you as you read through chapters two and three? Yeah. Um, I'd like to first off before I – get on my tangent. I want to say, Shirai, I'm so thankful for you. I'm thankful for your heart um, and for your heart to be baptized. I think that was such a beautiful thing. But also, I think that like walks us into this aspect of discipleship. You know, there was, like you said, there were steps that you took um, in order to come to this process. And I'm so thankful um, that you've decided and, and your son also so thank you for doing that. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremiah. <laughs> okay, so um, the first thing that I want to say is this aspect of um, the beauty that I received from reading chapters two and three is that um, knowing that following the Lord's commands brings us to um, the faithfulness of God. Um, and what I mean by that is um, when, when we think of a command, we think of a command being a rule. So recently we just talked about the greatest commandment with um, some of our students for one of our events. Um, and that was the way we communicated. A command is a rule that the Lord has. And I think in the story, in the stories, um, like John was commanded to prepare the way for the Lord to come, to prepare the way for the Messiah to be received. Um, and so I think it's like beautiful to see this aspect of the faithfulness of the Lord um, playing out in front of our eyes. Um, another cool thing that I really got from this was this aspect of us needing boy Jesus as much as we need grown man Jesus. Um, and what that really looks like is like Jesus was doing things as a child. Um, and I think with him doing things as a child, it really shows us how we are supposed to welcome the little child into the body of Christ. Um, 
we were talking the other day um, and I think Adam said a statement that Jennifer Schroeder uses all the time. Like kids aren't the future of the church. They are part of the church right now. Um, and so we are called um, to really present this aspect of including their mind, including their spirituality into the life of the church today. Um, so yeah, um, I think there's this aspect, a lot of inclusion um, is shown. Um, we see inclusion of women. I mean, it talks about um, the prophetess Anna. I think that's so beautiful um, to witness like how the Lord calls all people, not just a specific person or specific um, race or group um, into his kingdom. You're so right. You're so right. Like I love when Jennifer, the first time Jennifer said that, like I was convicted, you know, especially as I think about discipleship and like Miles is a great example of that. Like this, this man is the future of the church and he's also the church right now. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just love, I love that call to refocus ourselves and that call uh, of discipleship that, that we see here in Luke and that you just brought out. So, Hey, thank That's, that's so good. So Mackenzie, um, what, what you got? All right. So, um, I'm just going to talk about the things that stuck out to me and it's really just that people's lives were being changed and transformed even by Jesus as a newborn baby and even as Jesus as a child like Jeremiah was saying which I think is so cool um but in the story of the shepherds um in the beginning of chapter two you see the angel telling them I bring you good news of great joy and they suddenly see all of these angels praising God and they're like thinking to themselves this is something I need to see for myself and when they go and they see baby Jesus it just reminds me of like what Shariah said like that trustworthiness of God like what the angels told them was true and um i mean they went away glorifying and praising god like how cool is that to just know that they just saw jesus they saw the truth in front of their eyes and they went away praising god for that and jesus they didn't know what jesus was going to do they didn't know how he was going to save them but they knew that what god told them was true and they were changed and transformed by that and then we look at the story of Jesus, um, like Jeremiah talked about, where he was a young boy and he went to the temple by himself and he was talking to a bunch of people and he didn't have to be wise or old or anything like that, but he just spoke from where he was at. He spoke about how he felt God, God's presence on his own. And I just think that is such a beautiful thing. And he, his parents lost him and then he, they found him and he said, did you not know that I would be at my father's house? And that's just something that the mother just is like, whoa, I didn't think about that. But even though this is Jesus that we're talking about, our kids still have that same um, connection with God. They still have that same feeling of who is God to me? Is he my friend? Is, is he that good person that loves me and that father that treasures me? And um, from this story, it also said that Mary, his mother, treasured all of this in her heart. And her child spoke to her, not only because she was Jesus, but also because she was or he was her child and he was so he just felt that spiritualness and so i just like looking at that because it really hits on that upside down kingdom that they talked about in the other lesson about how we don't always look at it in the way of all of the older adults are the ones who are wise and have experience but just because a child doesn't have experience does not mean that they don't feel the presence of god so. Yeah. I mean, even in First Timothy, I think that's so good, Mackenzie. Like First Timothy talks about this aspect of don't allow people to look down on you because of your youth. Like, like 
And I think when we start talking about children in the life of the church, like we have this mindset, we come in with this mindset that they have to speak all eloquently or all of these things. And I just think that's not true. That's not real inclusion of a child. Yeah, I love that discipleship message there. We, we always say discipleship is reciprocal, meaning that, um, you know, the mentor and the mentee, um, the mentor is, gonna, is, is also going to grow in, in, their, in their discipleship by, by their mentee because we're all made in the image of God. We're all image bearers, so we can all uh, teach each other more about who God is. And so, I mean, I, you talk to uh, trail guide leaders or children's ministry uh, teachers, and, you know, they all say the same thing. They talk about the blessings that the kids give them and what they learn from the kids. And, and so, yeah, thank you guys for, for bringing that out and really highlighting that, that part. Um, you know, you, you talked about, you talked about, is that Luke? What is that? Luke chapter two, uh, 49 is what you're referencing as far as the father's house. Another translation would say, um, would say, did you know that I must be about my father's business? And I love that. It's one of my favorite verses in scripture. Like, I mean, didn't you know I'm about my father's business? Like, that's, that's what I'm about. And it's just, it's like, that's what I want to be about. Like, I want to be about my father's business. And Luke, Jesus is about, we're about to see this great story about what is, I mean, what is the father's business? Well, read Luke, right? Read what Jesus is about to do. Uh, watch his life. And then that helps us know this is what we're about. This is, we're about our father's business. And we look at the life of Jesus to figure out what that is all about. So, you know, the upside downness, you guys have mentioned the upside downness. Like, I just think about uh, just how wild it must have been to put yourself in. Shirai, you talked about how Israel had been waiting for, for this Messiah. And then the Messiah comes to a servant girl, you know, in Nazareth, you know, which is, um, you know, I, it, I don't even know what to compare that to, but it's, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not Atlanta. All right. It's not like a prestigious place or anything like that. I don't know if it lands prestigious. I'm just saying it's not like, it's not what you would expect. All right. It's not what you would expect. Uh, goes to Bethlehem is born in a manger with a bunch of animals. And the, the people, the first people that go and visit are some shepherds. So upside down, it's not what anybody would have expected. And then that's what the life of Jesus is about to do, about to flip everything upside down, upside down and who the kingdom of God is for. Of course, there's connecting the dots to say Jesus is the promised Messiah for Israel. But now there's going to be connecting of dots to say, hey, it's even bigger than that. And Jesus has come to come for all people. Salvation now is offered for all people. Um, I mean, this is this chapter, especially chapter two, it's like this is where hope comes into the world. This is where our, our Savior comes in. This is, this is what we are about. We're about his business, um, and he, he's coming into the world. And so now we get to move on from here to see what his life is really all about. But, hey, with that being said, you're right. Children are the church right now. So do we have Miles with us? Is he going to join us? Yes, yes, he is here. He <laughs> There's Miles. Hello, Miles. Hi. What's up, brother? Hi. Hey, man. Thanks for thanks for joining us, man. Um, I, I'm just gonna let Jeremiah and Mackenzie ask you a few questions um, at, for our lesson here. Okay. Okay, Miles. So, who is Jesus to you? God's son That's awesome. And so, I just also want to ask you, um. How does it feel knowing who Jesus is and that he came and saved you? It feels incredible knowing that you're loved by somebody no matter what. Even if you feel like you're not, you feel like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. So, Miles, you just made a really great decision recently um, to get baptized with your mom. Can you tell us how that felt and why you wanted to do that? <laughs> um, it felt it felt awesome because like knowing that I'm blessing the Holy Spirit lets me know that I'm being saved. Um 
never thought of it. I thought that it was just like, I'm getting baptized for the first time ever. Originally, I was scared. Because I had no idea what was going to happen. Yeah. Because then when it happened, I felt like a whole new person. Yeah. So your mom said, um, after she was baptized, like, that first week, like, all she did was cry. Like, what was, like, one thing that, like, one thing that you can remember that you, kept happening to you or um, a way it made you feel? Um, I kept on being in situations where I had to deeply talk to my friends about something important. Like, yeah. something that changed your life. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, and then I have one last question and then we'll let Mr. Adam take back over. Um, but I'm going to share, we, so on Sunday mornings, or sorry, not Sunday mornings, Sunday afternoons, we do a thing called Connect with our third through fifth grade families. Um, and of course, we've been doing it on Zoom. One of the cool things, we were having a Connect class um, one Sunday afternoon, um, and we're getting closer towards the end of the Connect. Um, but Miles raised his hand, and he did something that was I'll be very honest, if I was his age, I probably wouldn't have done, you know, um, but it was just so incredible to watch. He just basically brought up like his feelings of what's happening in the world. Miles, do you want to talk about those things? Of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll just repeat what I said, like 2020 hasn't been such an awesome year yet. I mean, like, we're not even in the middle of the year. Yeah. Okay. But, um, <laughs> but we're not even close to the end of the year. We can, we can still switch all of this around. And, like, the events that have happened, first with Kobe Bryant, then with the Mod Aubrey, then with COVID-19, then with um, George Floyd, with all of that. It's like we start, we all expect for 2020 to be the best year of all. It turns out it started up at the hill and then just decreased down. But now we have to make ourselves get back up. Because whenever we fall down, we always get back up. And we also have to just leave it to God to. Let us know what's going to happen. Wow. Th thank you so much, Miles, for sharing that. Man, listen, I want to tell you, bro, you got the Holy Spirit in you. That's why you can keep getting up. <laughs> you know, the baptism that we see here uh, of Jesus, you know, John says, a, a man is coming after me. It's going to baptize you with the Spirit. And what you chose to do a few weeks ago uh is, is make that decision and the spirit of God's in you. That's why you can communicate so, so well what's, what, what's on God's heart and what God wants and the hope that God has for us. And man, you are a child of God and we love you. I got one last question for you, Miles. What's it like being part of a church family? Because you, I thought that was so inspirational how you shared about that on, on, during your baptism. What's it like being part of a church family? It's amazing. It, I have people all around who care for me and who love me and it's like we're all one big whole family mm. amen amen and thank you miles you thank you for sharing with us man we love you brother love you too thanks for jumping on bro no problem so it doesn't get any better than that let's just be real all right, because because he is the church right now, um, and I think that was helpful for all of our discipleship. Uh, so, with that being said, though, do you have? Does anyone have any thoughts? Anything else that they want to uh, say about chapters two or chapters three, um, or anything about Luke uh, that they want to kind of pass on before we end? I know there's one thing that Mackenzie mentioned um, when she spoke of uh, Mary and how. In, in several instances as Jesus Christ was being 
honored and, and everyone was so glad that the Messiah was here, how she kept that close to her heart. I know when I read that for me, the, the first thing that jumped out to me was humility and humbleness. You know, she had such humility and was such a humble woman that, I mean, here she is the mother of Jesus Christ. I mean, if I was the mother of Jesus Christ, I would probably be jumping all over the place. However, she kept that close to her heart, you know, and she, she was just appreciative of the fact that her son was sent here to save people. And, and, you know, through his birth and through his death and his resurrection, here it is, we have the opportunity to be saved in Christ through, a, through baptism, you know, so. That's awesome. Jeremiah, Mackenzie, any other closing thoughts? Um, I was just going to say one last thing about just looking at this upside down kingdom. And I think it's such a cool thing because we, talking about children again, um, we just all have our own different perspectives. We have things to learn from each other, things to teach each other. And although some of us have different experiences and others don't have experience, but they have just this spiritual connection with God, I think children see that in the purest form. And it's so beautiful because it's that childlike faith that just that pureness and that humility that Jesus looked at us with. And I think that in this upside down kingdom, we don't always look at Jesus as like, um, in this upside down kingdom, we don't always think about it as being upside down because we've heard these stories a lot. And, but thinking about if these things were to happen right now, right in front of us how upside down and how crazy that would really be and how amazing it would be and how we would feel just going away praising and glorifying God in that moment and so just reading about these things like it allows me to see that I can still praise and glorify God because of the things that happened and are still happening today yeah and I want to piggyback that and that next component um what mckinsey said was so great about this aspect of this upside down narrative um with children but also i think there's this there's a beauty in knowing that we all are image bearers and because we all are image bearers we receive the holy spirit and so if we've received the holy spirit that means that like she said there's a lot to learn from everyone that's the marginalized voice but also like that's women in ministry that's women who are outside of ministry that's every single person who isn't included in the normalized church view they bring something to the table um and so i think me for my response to that is like how am i including other voices and inviting other voices to that table. Um, so, yeah. That's really good. That's a, I mean, that's a good call to discipleship, to be calling those other voices um, in, uh, knowing that they're image bearers and the Holy Spirit is in them. Um, and so, you know, I, I think my, the last thing that I would share is when Jesus came to the, as a baby to the temple for the purification rites, I think about the scene of Simeon and Anna, and I just think about what, 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 like, what was, it, what was, what was that like? I mean, this man who is, he's been promised by God that he's going to meet the Messiah. He will see the Messiah before he dies, um, and and Jesus comes in. They they bring Jesus in, and he goes and like picks up the baby like i mean what happens what would happen in our children's ministry if someone just tried to come snatch a baby from someone i mean just what like what a scene and he's like i can die now like i mean i just just I, and then you know anna you know celebrating the the fact that that he's that that, that the messiah has come I, I just think about that scene and i guess i say all that to say that i want to be more like simeon and anna I want to be that well connected to the spirit um, because everybody else missed it. 
you know, everybody else, I don't know how many people, how, how many people were there, but they missed it. Uh, but these two didn't, you know, these two didn't miss it. And I don't, and I want to, that's who I want to be. That's what we talk about in our discipleship about positioning ourselves so that God can transform us. I want to continue to position myself so that I can hear from God and I can respond. Uh, I don't, I don't want to miss what he is doing. Uh, and so, and then I just love the idea of the freedom that Simeon had. Like I can die now. I've met the Messiah. You know, like, I, I just love the freedom that we have as disciples of Jesus, that that salvation um, has come into our lives. Um, and we are free from, we are free from death. We have, we, we, we can die now and we can die now knowing that we know the Messiah, that the Messiah has come and saved us. Thank you guys. <laughs> thank you guys for, for joining me. Uh, thank you for sharing uh, with us what God has revealed to you and taught taught you here in chapters two and three thank you for teaching us um maggie cox will be with me next week uh, we're going heavy on interns from the jump uh, we're going to have a lot of different generations represented in our study but we're going heavy with the interns here at the beginning because you guys are all about to, to leave us uh but thank you uh so much for us miles shariah jeremiah mckenzie thank you it's been a, it's been a great lesson have a blessed day <laughs>